Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Jackson County Board of Supervisors. February 13th of 2024. And with me today, I have Don Schwanker, Lynn Flagel, Mike Steinis are your county supervisors. Uh, Lisa Smith is our county auditor. Bjorn is our IT director. Luann is our executive assistant, uh, also back here. And Mary from the media is here keeping an eye on us. <laughs> Hey, first, the new blinds. We first, oh, look at, yeah, look out the new blinds. <laughs> Actually, I, thought, I, I noticed those right off. Yeah, they're really nice. But hey, anyway, now we can get some sunburn here on this side of my face. With this, this is first on our agenda this morning, and Mr. Todd Keeney, our Jackson County engineer. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so the first item here is to go over uh, or award the rock bids. So. Uh, Did we get a handout or something with that to yeah. show us what the bids were? No, you're right. We didn't do that. God. I'll let me make comments. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a while to break habits, yeah, right? A... Mary wants one too, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> we print stuff like that in the local paper. So. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. I wish I thought to ask you, sir, for your agenda. <laughs> Cut and paste. <laughs> that would have nice. Did oh, I get yeah. a, you know, I probably should double check that to make sure that I have, it doesn't mean that I have the right amount of money in. Oh, and you know what you got? Nope, nope. It was right. They were, had a little issue with one last night when I left. <laughs> they were, but I see it's in. So, yes, I have to correct them. I'll always listen so to you. Bear with us, if you would, for just a few minutes, and we will. Speaking of gifts away, and if it done by the you got in the hospital first. I bet you check that. Even I can do that. Even I can do that. <laughs> We should have a policy where things get turned in on Friday so we don't have to do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's on every agenda that we can. Twice. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Take yeah. Take I don't want to see these in the trash later. No, no, no. We're going to study. I don't want you guys committing these to memory. In the circle. Of them. That's why we need a copy. We don't have to right. remember. Or you could email me. I'm shocked yeah. that they don't have visitors here. Thank you. I was actually going to talk to you guys about this afterwards. If you guys still want to be doing this in the board meeting, awarding this, because there's just, there's, I mean, there's no requirement to do it this way, but I know you guys have been doing this for this way for years. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, what we did in the past was they opened them and then we looked at them and then we said, you study them and then you bring them back to us. So I guess if you open them and study them, it's probably the same fashion. It's just uh, they're not open here. Yet. Uh, yeah, so these are quotes. So the only what I <clears throat> what I was saying is that we actually got quotes for one inch clean this year. Normally it's just road rock. So the one inch clean uh, is in. The reason we added that is because of the reclaim work that we're you know going to be contracting um, to haul a certain amount of a minimum amount of tons for one inch clean as well. So, so the the one sheet I handed you about one inch clean, there's no previous bid to compare from last year. So, so does this also diminish from the regular? Roadstone that we would be using, or is this just an addition to? So the one inch clean is in addition to, it yeah, comes addition. out of the total rock budget. Okay. The road aggregate, um, that is what I would call the, the the minimums, but it's it's also, there's road aggregate that we haul for spot rock, and there's road aggregate we're gonna haul for reclaim rock too. So it's, it's, it's together, but this is the minimum. We're going to hold more than this. This is just the minimum. Okay, so we anticipate uh, that we are going to... Uh, you need a one inch clean. We anticipate that we're going to reclaim about the same amount of rows, and we're going to make sure that the ones we did reclaim are, are, are in we're, really good shape for sure. But We're, we're trying to do 12 miles, um, so that's two miles more per year. Per district than last year so we're trying to do 12 instead of 10 and we're also i've talked to rick and we're going to tweak a little bit how we're doing it 
when how much what we how much material we bring in for sure because i think the guys would get too aggressive bringing too much what yeah. i would call dish material onto the road um and then also uh we're going to probably stop august for or excuse me october 1st that gives it a, a little more time to so, get impacted by traffic so well yeah i know we had some issues and everybody knows that we had some issues with this Cross cycle this year. They're coming well, a little was, early. It was more the it was more the four inches of rain we got after fifteen inches of snow. That yeah. was more the issue. But I went out last week on Thursday and Sunday, and I drove a lot of those. I got some complaints um, on the roads coming out of Clinton County, north and south into Jackson, that we reclaimed, and they actually <clears throat> were driving pretty good. So as bad as they were during that actual time, it, to me, it seems like they dried out pretty fast. Well, that's which, the, which is the goal. So, yeah, it's, um, I mean, yeah, it's kind of done its purpose, but we had that little. Right. And it's just spot. because of the lack of moisture last year that the dirt didn't get worked out of. So it, it just kind of. Well, there's a lot of factors. One, I think we were bringing in too much dirt and not a mixture of rock and dirt. So we were trying to be too aggressive. That plus it was probably too dry to get optimum compaction. And then we had, you know what rained for four days after we got 15 inches of snow. So we had a lot of absorption so, yeah. into the material. So yeah. these bids that I'm looking at, these are what you're recommending or is what you decided on, is that correct? Yeah, so the contract amount is what we're contracting with each producer at, at those quarries for the minimum, to haul that minimum amount. So for instance, like on the aggregate, road aggregate, we're not doing anything out of Ruby just because it's, so basically so far away if you look at the one inch clean um there's ruby Arnsdorf, and deckard that we're not contracting any just because those quarries are positioned too far away from roads that we're going to reclaim so we're not contracting in there sure the travel time and yeah. expense would be yeah that's all calculated out before this is decided though correct yeah is there a dramatic change in price from last year um so like the one inch clean, we don't really have any comparison right. to, but the road rock. Uh, so Bellevue sand and gravel, they're basically their price last year was $7 and 35 cents a ton. So they went up 40 cents river city stone. Their price was seven fifty five. They went up 40 cents. Um, Wendling, a lot of their quarries went from seven eighty five to $8. So that's only 15 cents. And then, uh, Decker went from uh, $7 to $7.50, that's 50 cents. So Eden Valley went up 40 cents. So it's it's a mixture. Some went up 50, some went up 15, some went up at 40, but looks like... Decker's only $7. Huh? You don't know there. Oh, Decker went down in price. Excuse me. They went from seven fifty to 7 They were seven fifty in 2023. Okay, so you need a motion to approve this? Yeah. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion and a second to approve and award the rock bids as presented. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Right. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, so here's all the... And that's also to authorize the chair signatures, correct? Yeah, right. Yeah, thank you. Now, do you can put I think I've asked this before. Do all, these quarries don't all have loaders, right? They, Is this their price with? If we load it ourselves, we'll get a break. So this is a base price. So I guess what I'm, what maybe Nen is asking, like most of the quarries do supply a machine to load, whether we load it ourselves or whether the quarry loads it, but we don't have to supply a machine at the quarry to load. No, I don't think so. No, they're usually there. Yeah, yeah. but we might have to load ourselves. If we load ourselves, I believe we get a we get a discount off of that. So, but that's not shown in here because you don't know for sure whether you'll be loading yourself or not. So, well, some of the quarries are a little remote, and yeah. it's not personnel there all day long so all right um next item is to uh, uh award the uh contract for the 308th street uh assessment district paving 
So I believe that was sent out ahead of time, maybe, right? Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, go. we got it. We got it. I got one for two. That ain't bad. <laughs> uh, so we had this. That's, I mean, I was surprised. I'm very happy to see that much bidding activity. I mean, to get five bidders um, for such a small job. Uh, that's pretty good. Really good, actually. So uh, looking at the resolution. So we, if you recall, we set up the assessment district for around 294,000. And you guys had approved a 50-50 split of that. So our our estimate is really good. So we got three guys, three bidders below us and two bidders above us. So that our estimate, you know, fit right in there, which was good to see. So um, that's really good pricing. So what will happen is um, the assessment is based on the estimated cost at the time the, district, the, district, or the uh, district is established. So this will be, we won't change the assessment. It's still going to be based off the 294000 So what we'll end up doing is, because as part of access, if you can recall, that road coming, you'll people will have to leave going to the west on that level B. So we will have to do some work on the level B, haul some rock and do some improvements because that'll be the only way in and out for a time being. So, you know, whatever money, the difference left on the table, we'll end up spending probably to prep the road. The, the level B going west so people can get access while we're paving. So so that subdivision, is there a way they can get out to 52 in a different part of the subdivision? I don't know. You're paving, you're paving past that. Right. So the, when we pave, I think it's set up in two phases. <laughs> that there's going to be a phase where they can't go east. They're going to have to go out to the west. And that's when we'll have to upgrade or improve the level B so we can provide a good access out. And then once that's done, um, they'll be able to get out that way. Once that pavement, that concrete reaches strength, they'll be able to get out to the east and then we'll be paving, paving the west section from the drive, basically. So there's actually two subdivisions, one's closer to the east and one's a little yeah. farther west. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if there's, that. I would hope there's enough room on their shoulder somewhat too, maybe to get access one way but i mean like with anything with some there's going to be an inconvenience of access yep. that we're paving so um do you have a resolution number resolution number 1016-02-13-2024 uh along with that so the so i mean we talked about some of those little bit during budget time too so along with that some of them paid up front is that stay in, does that go toward this contract or does it stay until um, pay in account or balance, you know, as far as in your budget or someone's budget until it's paid in full? Like all of them are paid in full, whoever the. No, so I talked to the treasurer. Right now, the payments are all at the, tre the treasurer. Right. No money has been transferred to the secondary road. Right. Mm -hmm. So what she plans on doing is, um, I believe is that in September, the next tax collection, she's going to take what she has collected so far because a bunch of people paid their full assessment up front. Yeah. And then whatever is collected in September, because that's when these, they only pay the assessment once a year. Once a year. And they're going to, and I, think, I believe it's in September when they do that. She'll transfer whatever she has to date plus whatever she's collected, and then she will keep doing that each September until it's paid off, until everybody is paid. We made that adjustment in the 25 budget. Okay, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. So I, I sold, I think, a hundred and, I don't know, it was like $75,000 in revenue coming in from this transferred to me for the, for right. to the road department for the assessment district. Okay, that's I where I was going I with the I think with budget. that September payment, I think, the way that I saw it in the budget was close to 80, 85 or 86,000. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So we, because we needed to get it in so we could, yeah. So we've looked at that. We've made that adjustment in the 25. Okay, budget. so that is revenue coming yeah. to the secondary. That's, what, that's yes. what I was looking yeah. at. So we showed it as a expense for yes. the 24 and 25 that we have back up. I split the expense over two years. Yep. So we show in about half the expense in current fiscal and half in next fiscal. Right. Do you want to permit to, or, uh, Motion to approve lowest bid. Yes. Um, well, yeah, motion to approve the resolution, I guess, is what, and execute the contract. So moved. Second. Motion and second to approve resolution 
1016-02-13-2024, um, referring to the low bid for the pavement project on 308th Street, future are excavating in the amount of $273,382 and approved the board's signature. All those in favor? Any further discussion? I have a question. So the first one is approving the, the resolution, correct? That's what the, what the motion that is on the table, correct? Yes. And then you're going to come back with another motion? No, the resolution it? says to execute it, the contract as well. It, it includes all that, I yeah. believe. Do this back. Let me write this down. When do they want to start? Can't well, talk to them until after they sign the contract. Okay. Can't talk to them about schedule until after they sign the contract. So we'd like to have it completed in 24. All those in favor say any further discussion? You okay, Lisa? Yep. I'm, yep. All those in favor say aye. All right. Aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And then right after you guys are done, there's a drainage district meeting here. Yes, sir. Okay. At 11. Starts at 11? Mm -hmm. That's the public hearing. Which I, was supposed okay. to. I plan on being there for that. Yeah. Yes. Fun for the whole family. It's what? Fun, fun for the whole family. family. You guys have one drainage district? Three. 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 We had like, I think there's like 15 or 20 in Clinton County. Lower Upper Mooney Hall. Yep. And you guys, are any of them elect their own trustees, or are you guys all the trustees for each one? They have their own trustees. Each. Really? Yeah. yeah. Every district does? Yeah. Well, I think they're all the same for all three. They're That's all in the same family. spot. Uh -huh. It's one big happy family. And they have, like, watchmen. So the district is all in one place. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. We don't have them scattered anymore. So they just have the meetings at like a family reunion or what? <laughs> <laughs> well, come right here. here. Bring the one last year. No, I was Bring the picnic back here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank um, that would like to approach the board this morning online or in present. Seeing or hearing none. Uh, next on our agenda is Laura Carson from the Jackson County Historic Preservation. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I'm actually not here as an ECIA employee. I just have a, I have a day full of ECIA meetings. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this has been a fun way to start the morning. When you supervise meeting through so much fun. Uh, we have it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad you're happy. So um, I'm actually here today representing the county's Historic Preservation Commission, which is different than the Historical Society. We're part of what's called the state's Histor uh, Certified Local Government Program, and we need to provide a report every year. So this um, is the <clears throat> the recommended 2023 report. So for last year, and then it also includes our work plan for 2024. Uh, the Certified Local Government Program provides us with access to technical support. We're also eligible for grants. Um, and it's, it's a good benefit for us. We get that state support and then a technical network that we can um, also tap into. So reports, uh, there for, if you have any questions, I, I'd be happy to try to answer it. I do want to, again, extend our thanks to the change you made in the number of our members. We've been able to have a quorum. We reduced that by five, didn't we? Yeah. Well, yeah. it's hard to get. Everybody's busy. <laughs> well, we were down to six out of 12, so we couldn't meet because we couldn't have a quorum. We didn't have enough members, so we... Again, appreciate that and all your support. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the only lagging item uh, you might have noticed is we are still waiting for Heritage Works to provide us with a report on the insane asylum. Um, and I will be in Dubuque today, and so I will see if I can swing by their offices and find out. They're over two years overdue, and I, I just try to, we'll try to resolve that and get back to you. Okay. Um, but uh, we do appreciate your support yep. for that. It is an interesting site, and, and we intend when we catch up here a little bit, maybe to um, secure that a little better. So they did our 
Maybe it's crew go up there. Well, they've been fairly busy, so I we talked about it, but uh, they have not been up there. Um, so and we uh, <clears throat> we appreciate that, and we'll be, we're happy to work with uh, with the maintenance staff and with the conservation department to try to secure funds for these uh, historic structures too. So that's something we that's part of our work plan. I mean, that's one of these is. It's tough, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, the budgets are tough and we're trying to build a new facility and, and fix up old facilities. And <laughs> I, I, I really love to leverage other people's money to help out. <laughs> public One of those, not I like to get those grants in and help us out. They're going to go to someone. They might as well get, yeah, well, well get some here. We can try to get some in the county if we can. You bet. You bet. So uh, are we looking to pass something here as far as this uh, local government annual report? Uh, we need your approval. And then there is an elected official signature, which I believe you would sign as the chair. I think it's a just a, a motion. There's no resolution or anything. No. No, yeah, I think so. I Make a motion to approve the uh, work plan for 2024 and authorize chair to sign the certified local government annual report. Okay. I have a motion and a second to approve the uh, 2023 certified local government report and signature as required. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Aye. Thank you. Thank, thank you and appreciate you. the work that you're doing and, and your crew and all the help that you hopefully you can move forward and yeah. we can all move forward somehow. Reasonably find it fiscally. You bet. <laughs> all right. All right. Thanks. Good morning. You too. Thank you. Yeah. All right, we're just moving right along. And next on our agenda is Mike Storm, our Jackson County Emergency Medical Service Coordinator. Well, that's a mouthful there. It is, ain't it? I usually yeah. just say EMS, but. Yeah, yeah. EM, oh, yeah. Wait, remember, EMS, <laughs> EMSC Coordinator. There you go. Uh, morning. morning. So, uh, what I've been working on the past few months, as an individual, is in the EMS world, is winter time is kind of uh, education time for us. So, we are currently hosting two classes, a uh, EMR class, which previously known as first responder and an EMT class. So we're able, we got approval for both classes because last time I spoke to you, um, EMT especially, we ended up with six and we needed eight. So took a little talk with the NICC, but um, we got approved to host that class. And then we have 14 in our EMR class. So hopefully here in a couple months, we'll have 20 new providers in the county. Um, along with uh, continuing education opportunities for our current providers that they sit in our classes, we're doing our lectures via Zoom, they don't have to leave home and get their continuing education hours that way. So I had a lot of people jumping in, especially uh, at the end of March is when certifications are due every two years. So if they were due, um, God, <laughs> but you know how that goes, man. <laughs> every, get, gets it at the last couple months of the two year cycle. So uh, that's going well. The EMR class is ending next week, actually. No. Um, EMT class goes to the end of March. So um, that was taking a lot of my time uh, during the winter. Uh, so uh, it's, well, I don't think we would have 80% of those people if it wasn't how we were doing it. Hybrid and skills in Jackson County, not traveling to NICC. Sure. Exactly. And do so, we have out-of-county participants? No. We do not. No. Um, we, we talked because we're when NICC was on that cuff. If we needed a couple more of that sure. to hold it, um, I did reach out to those and uh, had other things come up that they didn't um, participate or join in that. So all 20 um, between EMR and EMT are Jackson County residents. Uh, some were, most of them are, you know, previously on the service. We did have a couple that um, actually joined services because of the class. So that's nice to boost numbers because everything I do is nothing if we don't have EMS providers in the in the county. So, well, yeah, it's it's nice to promote that, but it's really really nice to have participants to uh, want to do it, and I guess volunteer pretty much. Right? Absolutely, I have, I have one uh, one individual that's taken uh, EMT and firefighter one at the same time. So. Um, Pretty busy. That's <laughs> three nights, nights a week. week. And, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, and the way I look at it, and I was in the service years ago, a part of it, but uh, the way I look at it, if you get to the EMR, sometimes they move on to the 
EMT. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, a lot of these guys that are in the EMR, they're, they're on the fire departments and non-transport. So um, but at least get more of those providers there. And, to, you know, whether they're just out assisting with our transporting ambulances with, um, whether it's just the extra pair of hands or being those, you know, we need them. If you have Andrews, so you have Lamont, it takes a little while for us to get yeah. uh, uh, transports to get there. So, so am I correct in saying, Stormy, that uh, uh, it's okay if I call you Stormy, right? Absolutely. It's always been Stormy to me. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's correct in saying, like the like the rescue squad or Bellevue Fire goes to most of the calls that the EMS are called on. Yeah. So it depends on your on your um, town and how that runs. So in Bellevue, uh, Bellevue Fire, Bellevue Rescue goes to all the rural calls within the Bellevue Ambulance District. They start doing that because, uh, you know, some of these farmhouses, you get two people on the ambulance and try to get them out and maneuvering. Manpower. Manpower. And I don't want to have to get there with my transport ambulance and then call for a fire, and that's another 10, 15 minute wait. Whereas in town, we have the police department to assist, and it's easier to call people for extra help. Sure. So, um, they don't run in town. Now, Preston and Miles, from my understanding, is fire department is going out to any of their calls, whether it's in town or rural, um, simply to help out lift assist and just be the extra pair of hands. Sure. Whether it be traffic control or manpower or lifting. Whatever. Lifting a bit, yeah. Yep. And then in communities like Ball and Monmouth, Lamont, Andrew, their first, their first responders or their fire departments are going out um, because of the expended transport time of the of the um transport and ambulance so um help us working real real well we have uh a great uh ems association i don't know if, if you guys um realize we added delmer and lost nation fire departments out of clinton county to our ems association because our um Jackson County Ambulance serves their entire district as their transport. So it just makes sense that they collaborate with us and different initiatives that we're working on. Nice. Always, always best to include somebody and get there. If they have issues, they can bring them up. And uh, as well, long as coverage is it, that way, that makes sense. It helps sense. with training and just good workflows. And it, it, it really does. Yeah. Like that. And I don't know how long it's been since Jackson County took over Lost Nation. Was it a couple of years now? Oh, it's probably been has it more than that? Be pushed in probably four okay. four almost five. We've always covered some of them, right. but we took over we took over the, the bottom half of it. Yeah. <clears throat> so and all in all, the position I know all, all in all is going good. Um my personal uh education, I guess working on too is um uh working through getting my ACLs and PALS instructors. So those are um certifications that paramedics uh, are required to have and that's required in my uh, job description to be an instructor with those so um working through that process i got to go to class and then get evaluated instructing classes before they signed off for me to do them individually but um we'll have that done here in probably a couple months so i was working with the different departments yeah I, yeah i have no problems with you know his uh um, I wasn't able to attend our last uh, EMS association meeting because I had class that I was teaching and no one wanted to lecture over OB and having babies. So <laughs> I couldn't get out of that. But um, yeah, no, it's uh, we're good. We actually signed the majority of the department signed on to an affiliation agreement that um, the state required anyone that any agency that runs under 100 calls affiliate with someone basically just as a kind of you help me i help you then um the agreement that was signed on by the services has no financial legal ties to anything everyone's still their separate agency is just kind of we're going to help each other out and that's what we were doing at the association level so um so we processed through that met those state requirements there and uh um, we're working through different um patient care report changes or online systems yeah, I usually try to get to some of the EMS meetings. There's usually con conflict with other meetings that I have, but yeah, I pre sure appreciate it. We all surely appreciate what uh, what all our volunteers are doing and and uh, and what you're doing to help out to train them. And hopefully, there's always a good working relationship with. Yeah, with and I got to watch what I say sometimes because I was talking to Al Mulhausen, and I'm like, you know, whatever you guys need, I'm pretty much here for you. You know, 
He's like, well, we had pancake breakfast on Sunday. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you get to have some sausage. I'll be there to eat. How about that? Right? <laughs> so appreciate it. Hope's going well. Yeah. Think, thanks for your guys' support. Mm -hmm. Well, if you need something from us, bring it forward, and we'll see what we can do. And uh, do you have the courthouse on the radar for like CPR teaching? Yeah. So um, the last uh, safety meeting or security meeting, right? There's two committees safety. now. <laughs> Whichever one that was, the the one that was originally in there, right? Um, uh, the chief deputy reached out to me about um different trainings, possibilities, and what they're looking for, and so I'm working through him on the needs of the courthouse so mm -hmm. as, as they tell me what type of training whether they want you know formal full cpr training or just everyone gets hands-on first aid training training stop to bleed is a big initiative um i was working a couple of months ago with uh department of public health so there's an initiative within our our region of pushing stop to bleed classes getting uh stop to bleed kids tourniquets and stuff in schools and churches and public areas so um, obviously our public health is kind of minimum staffed here in, in the county. So I helped out making contact with uh, different organizations to get that grant funding to them. So sure, appreciate that too. So in yeah. our safety yeah. policy, I believe we had something put in there that we're gonna do CPR for sure. Yeah, I, I, that's why I figured CPR. It's more of the first day and how much do we want to go in? Is it more like, like I said, the stop the bleed thing or do we want to go in the full, um, you know, stroke recognition, heart attack, the, 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 the formal classes? There. You know, it's one of the things that you just don't do it every day. So a little refresher once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and then it's balancing the act between, you know, everyone's time because I got, class if we go like the american heart association you got to watch the dvd and videos and it's going to be a three four hour class and i know that's not conducive to a lot of people's learning so um and and time schedule um so i was working with uh i talked to becky too when we do the you know bloodborne pathogens all those online trains you know there might be some stuff on there too that people can do on their own time and then we can kind of do a hybrid you do Correct. just, just yeah, like my ems classes you do the classroom portion online and then we'll come, I'll get the dummies out and practice right, on the kids and the yeah. 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 <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, a lot but, going through school. <laughs> I've been in touch with Jim on that and what whatever needs will work and make a schedule. Appreciate it. Yep. Yeah. So I'll keep us posted if you need something and uh move forward. Excellent. Thank you. How's it going? Thank you. All right. Lisa. I need, motion, I need a motion to approve the minutes of the February 6, 2024 board proceedings. I've written by Auditor Smith and authorized publication in the official newspapers. So, second. Motion and a second to approve the minutes of the February 6, 2020, 2024 board proceedings as written uh, by Auditor Smith and publication in the newspaper. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> motion carried. I need a motion to approve and authorize the auditor's office to issue warrants in the publication of the claims listing in the amount of $498,035.83. So moved. Second. Motion and second to approve the claims as presented at $498,035.83. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I need a motion to approve setting a public hearing date for a fiscal year budget amendment on March 5th, 2024 at 10 a.m. Second. Motion a second to set the public hearing date for a fiscal year budget amendment on March 5th of 2024, 10 a.m. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. That's all that I have for the board today. As we thank you as we plan out our budget just remember i'll try to attend via zoom on the 19th of march but i will be in san antonio and i just don't know how that should be a problem but yeah we're gonna have to start talking about um budget, public budget. hearings and you know that's the next thing we're going to work through is the the first public hearing and then the second public hearing and we're making preparations for the mass mailing to all jackson county taxpayers um, that will go as up required um, that, as, as required, yes. Um, so we're working through some of those details um, right now. 
And I don't recall approving those San Antonio trips. So I, don't <laughs> I don't remember asking about it. San Antonio trip approval. So watching our son shoot nationals at trap for me. Good deal. We'll enjoy that. Okay. Well, thank you. Is that it, Lisa? That's it. That's it. Luann? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, hey, calendar this week. Um, 11 o'clock this morning, right after the meeting, we'll have the Green Ireland Drainage District's annual meeting um, in here, hopefully, for all of you. At 4 o'clock this afternoon is the Coconut River Watershed Management Authority Executive Committee meeting by Zoom for Don. Uh, tomorrow on February 14th at 9 a.m. is the NIN's turn on KMAQ's Just Talk program. And at 1 p.m., and it also has a 0 to 5 and 60 minutes meeting by Zoom. Thursday, February 15th at 9 a.m. is a HTF or a Housing Trust Fund meeting in Dubuque or by Zoom, also for NIN. And at 6 p.m. that night is a Limestone Bluffs RC&D meeting uh, by Zoom for Don. Monday, February 19th at 1.30 p.m. is a Waste Authority meeting for Mike at the transfer station. Um, at 6 o'clock that night, there's a Together We Build Steering Committee meeting for NIN. And at 6 o'clock also is a Zoning Committee meeting for any of you that wish to attend that. Our next regular meeting will be on Tuesday, February 20th at 9 a.m. And that afternoon at 5 o'clock will be a Conservation Board meeting um, in Hurstville, I believe, for any of you that wanted to do that. And at 10 o'clock on Thursday is the website design presentation. Correct. Yeah, I have that. In my schedule, but I, I just had a meeting at the courthouse. I didn't have what I was for. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And all of you going to that? Yeah. Well, we're Any invited. Yeah. So if we're interested in what they can do, not that I will use it every day, but uh, certainly the way it sounds, we need to look things over. The only other question I had about Thursday the 15th was whether or not we want to try and do a budget work session that day. We've been trying to do them every Thursday, but a couple things um that meeting for one and then has to get through their housing trust funds so i don't know what you think about trying to have a budget work session that that day yet do we need to i mean there's a few um, things we need to yeah i was going to say there's a few things that we need to we need to tie up yes i mean if you're gonna if you're here for the we have one scheduled today yet if for if time permitting also so yeah well it looks like our meeting is going to get a little pretty a little before 11. yeah yeah, I have a little time to put it. So yeah, we can make some of those discussions then. <laughs> okay, or well, we keep won't put it there in case we need it. Yeah, we can. I mean, well, are you uh, zooming into the housing trust? So 10 ish would still, but that's just. And that's we're doing the, the website thing. That's the website thing. Yeah, so we'll so be you probably need 11. So. In this case, 11 or so. You can put it down for a work session for 11. If not, we'll. Nobody shows up. I guess we won't have that meeting. We won't have a meeting. <laughs> All right. Um, the other business that I have this morning is you wanted to talk about um, the appointment to the Conservation Board. Um, this will be one person um, whose term will expire in 1231-2028. And you just have to decide who you want to appoint to that, to that vacancy. Well, I will say this. I think we're very fortunate to have a couple qualified or three qualified applicants, again, that are willing to get paid substantially for attending. I have not had any calls or recommendations. Does anybody have a preference? <clears throat> preference, I know the one does have a bachelor's degree in horticulture from Oregon, Oregon State. And they both appear to be, um, I mean, not lifelong, but local residents anyway. Yeah. Local residents. And the other one does a, has that on 
a lot of boards and yeah, pensions. you're right. So, you're right. Yeah, she volunteered she for a lot of time. And I guess we're looking for a female to fill that position. Is that correct? We are. I should for gender balance. Correct. And technically, we should probably accept. Um, Lori Rowling's resignation before we appoint somebody new. I'm going to put that on the agenda. So, then how do we do that? Just well, there wouldn't be an opening if you don't, if you're not in it. Did the term run out? I, I think she just know. quits, right? Yeah, the she's term, out. The term, the term ran out. And she the term ran out, but she doesn't want to be reappointed. Yeah. yeah. So I don't think it's we, just a vacancy now because yeah. she's just gone. The term's over. Mm -hmm. So I would entertain a motion for someone to fill the board. I think we need to uh, keep the full board if we can. It's hard to differentiate between three yeah. really good candidates. Sure is. Do we pick out of a hat or? <laughs> I don't think we're going to go wrong either way we pick. I don't either. Yes, I would make a motion for Miss Lifter. Second. I have a motion and a second to a point. Angie Petit Lichter as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And again, I want to thank for everyone for applying and hopefully uh, you keep in consideration if we are in need at uh, another time. Did I take the vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. My only other question is, do we need to talk about the sprinkler bid? Or is that need? Um, talk to maintenance this morning. They're still in conversation with uh, repair people. Okay. And thinks we're okay to um, get a recommendation here or maybe even a second opinion. Um, okay. So we thought we were okay that nothing's going to subside quickly. So. We're still in conversation for that. Hopefully we get that finished here quickly. And is that something that we don't have to pass here as a board? We just, let's just repair. So I'll be in conversation or any of us can be in conversation with maintenance and decide what they come up with. And I think it's a maintenance decision, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. That's all I have for you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Speaking to... I don't have anything else on my agenda. I was just going to, I know Nina and I were out in Des Moines last Thursday, um, had some interesting conversations. Um, also, we just talked about unfunded mandates a little bit. And then in, in the last Iowa magazine that we had, that Lucas, our legal counsel, had a real nice article in there if you get a chance to read that. So, um, again, it was even the mailing for these, nope. you know, that mm -hmm. the state should have picked that up, you know. It's yeah, like it's, it puts it's, a, it's an unfunded mandate. Well, it puts a burden on the on the local taxpayers here that uh, they they implement a policy or a procedure, and it puts a financial burden on the county. So it's it's uh, it's just something that we need to discuss. And if there's any solution to it, I don't know, but it needs to be brought forward to our local leaders, or not local leaders, at the state level leaders, and. Um, this is what we're working with. There's a cost. I'm sure 99 counties are going to talk about the cost. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I can tell you that as of this date, Department of Management doesn't have everything and ready to go yet. So they have a month. I mean, we, we have to have that. We are mandated by law to have this set out. So somebody's got to put their, they got to get there. <laughs> they got to get going in a faster well, gear. The law should, shouldn't be against us if they don't have their timely in a timely yeah. manner. But well, then they're they late getting things as far as budget stuff. Yeah, yeah. So and, and then they have to get it to us, and we expect mm -hmm. to have it on time. So yep. that was a costly again, delay. It was a very costly delay. You're right. Yeah, and I have passed that on to uh -huh. one of the legislatures. Talked about it, and she said they're in the process of collecting that. 
kind of see what the ramifications are. Um, yeah. Or, or, and is it what they intended or whatever? So, <clears throat> but it was a good nine million dollars sitting around. That's right. It was a good meeting for us, I think. You know, there was collaboration between other supervisors, a lot of conversation. And just let me clarify, we do have, we are bonded. Yeah, so, we went through this a couple okay. years ago. Well, too. I just want to make yeah. sure that we, we, Jackson County, we are bonded. We do not have an insurance policy. We have followed the law. We are bonded. So we are referring to elected officials. Yeah. Oh. Um. This was a question. It, or, it got brought up in the legislative season, yeah. session that uh, requirements, and I think you can you go either way, of course. So basically, they can't come to back to me personally to say you're responsible for a bad decision. Well, yeah, <laughs> you well. know, or a good decision. What <laughs> you get a bonus? Yeah, good luck. So yeah, well, I don't. Have, does anyone else have any boards or commissions? Um. um Together we build is the advisory board is meeting tonight with the fair board and uh, the extension council to see if we can hash out a management agreement for renting the building. So together we build building out. That's a, that's going on tonight. So hopefully, um, did they come up with terms for lease agreement between Jackson County and I know we were working on some terms and you guys. We're going to discuss that. We again. Got to, well, we got we to figure out who's going to be running the building. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, first things first, yeah. We talked about, I, I told them who all needs to have liability coverage and and minimum what it needs to be in. Um, the extension seems to think they have it, and together we build, we we'll get, get it. it. And, so we need that. And, uh, and uh, the fair board, they have it, and it's, they're just working the nuances out. But uh, um, hopefully, we, hopefully we have a productive meeting tonight. We come out with a... A general structure on how we're going to proceed that can they can affect March first because there's a stack of people waiting to try to rent that building, whether it's ready on the twenty sixth when the first people are going to come in there yet to be determined. Um, it looks I was in it the other day and a lot of, to the layman it looks like there's a lot of work left to be done, but they're working diligently. The E nine one one board I set in for you guys. Uh, they passed their budget, everything seemed to go. It was a short meeting, it was like um, 15, 16, 15, 20 minutes mostly, and um, everything seemed to be going good. Uh, there was an additional budget request other than the two that were submitted. I think it was Bellevue, Sabula, and Preston each credit for something. So um, there was one addition, but other than that, it all went pretty good. So any discussion on the com communication board? I nope. mean, there's always discussion, you know, we're still working through funding agreement for that. So um, hopefully we can come up with a reasonable. Just to piggyback off what you said, Don, um, I did spend some time on Friday with our insurance agent. We visited the law enforcement center and we did visit the Together We Build. Um, and it's trying to get things to bridge over from our builder's risk insurance over to property insurance. Took some pictures, you know, visited with some contractors had to kind of come up with a percentage of completion of both buildings and that's been submitted to the insurance company for review. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to figure out, we talked about that a little bit also when we did that, when you did that, uh, yeah. um, you know, that to me, I, I don't know how the insurance company figures all that, but you know, we have a concrete building with steel studs and drywall. None of that burns. So I mean I you know does there a, is there a consideration in there as far as the cost? My meeting yesterday with the insurance agent was canceled, but I will be bringing that up to her when we meet next. Yeah, I mean yeah. it certainly has to come into consideration if everybody's got wood siding or wood interior and and whatnot. But a flammable product and these buildings are basically self so whatever whatever people put in there. You know, I mean, okay. I mean, okay. I mean a communication board, too. We could just yeah. sometime I brought it up to an individual. I said, Does it make any sense to go district wide? Like, I mean, we are divided in a district, three districts for us. Does it do you allocate to each district? I don't know if that makes any sense. Or not, but discussion to be had. Yep. Anything else before the board this morning? Um, is the uh, 
Green Island, is that a work session or is that in on our meeting? It's a separate meeting. It's a separate meeting. It's it's a separate separate meeting. meeting. So we will, we can adjourn, adjourn and then uh, we'll open up the public or the Green Island meeting. Mm-hmm. So we'll move. Second. Motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you all. Have a great day.